Good evening. Welcome to this special edition of the Sinister Seymour Show, honoring the life and legacy of Larry Vincent in what would have been his birthday. Now, here he is, your host for this episode, Ben Ben Thompson. Thompson. (laughs) Hello, Fringies. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to our 98th birthday special for Larry Vincent of the Sinister Seymour Show. Today we're going to look back on Larry Vincent's legacy and, you know, just reflect on some of our prior episodes we've done and celebrate his life. Today I have with me a very special guest, none other than our very own Seymour himself, Mr. Caleb Hall. Hello, Fringies. So, yeah, so today is uh, Larry Vincent's 98th birthday. He would have been 98 if he was still alive today. 98 so. years. That's a lot of years. It is. It's almost 100. Almost. So, so yeah, um, it's quite a legacy, you know. He started off and doing smaller roles, led up to Captain Star, and then went on, of course, his most notable role, Seymour. So, it's quite the, it's been about 50 years since he's passed, pretty much. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the fact that there's still fans out there today who still remember him, and then, of course, younger generations. And, and this was a late-night show, so you had to be up real late in order to actually watch it. Yeah. So, fans are few and far between, I'd say. Although there does seem to be a growing amount of them. I've seen there's a Facebook group that, you know, there's fans have kind of congregated. and So, you know, it's it's very interesting, and that I think that's a testament to, you know, how many people truly love his work, you know, the fact that people are still talking about him and he's being brought up and that, you know, fans are willing to come together, you know, in a time where originally they probably wouldn't have had much of a way to, to get in touch, per se. Right. So. And you got to understand, especially today, there's a lot of things that are in. People like retro, and people like spooky, and people like quirky humor. And even if that wasn't the main draw back when it came out, today, there's a high demand for that. They have, like, horror conventions... Knott's Berry Farm has a spooky farmer. They have uh, the thing at, oh, what's it called? At uh, Universal Studios. Horror Nights. Horror Nights. And doesn't Six Flags have one? They do. Actually, interestingly enough, before uh, Larry Vincent uh, did Scary Farm, which, you know, he hosted the first year, he did. He started, I believe, Six Flags did their own haunt event the year prior. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah. So Six Flags did it first, and then um, Larry Vincent's like, hey, that's a good idea. Or was it Walter Nutt? It was Walter. I, they, I believe they wanted to do a press event, so that's, you okay. know, kind of get people in. Walter Nutt wanted to do something for 72, but, you know, Seymour was already booked over at uh, Six Flags, so that's why they started in 73. Interesting. So. You see, I portray Seymour in this new, crummier show, yet I'm still learning new things. And I think it's interesting, because I know uh, Larry Vincent did an event at Universal, uh during the day and when he did it at six flags it was also during the day that's why okay. it didn't work out so that's why when they did uh halloween haunt and not scary farm uh it was a nighttime event because you know it worked better because i remember at a uh, six flags you know it was daytime it didn't work well because i i actually uh i went to six flags i believe a couple months ago and the theater that they that he uh he hosted in is still there you okay can't go inside it but it's walked right by it nifty but so. back to my the point that i was making before is there's a lot of demand for spooky things and Seymour delivers. I don't, but Seymour does. It's another thing I want to talk about, because, you know, I mean, obviously Larry Vincent is the the true Seymour. Yeah. But you were the first person to really portray him since his passing in this new show, which is on YouTube. It's not a huge show. It is what it is. I mean, we're a couple of college students that are just doing this for fun. It's exactly. not going to be a high budget. <laughs> yes. but We got $20 per episode. <laughs> With that being said, though, still, I mean, it is still uh, a heavy weight to kind of carry on your shoulders. Would you like to talk about kind of taking on that role initially, how that was for you and how you'd approach that? When, when I first started. Mm-hmm. So when I first started doing Seymour, uh, Ben came up to me, like like before we're doing Seymour, Ben came up to me and said, hey, I have this idea of bringing back this old show from 50 plus years ago, and uh, you seem to have the face shape and the mustache for it. <laughs> so the mustache is... Uh, it wasn't my acting skills. As you can see, it's the mustache that brought me in. And it's a great opportunity. Although I don't have very much acting experience, this is a great opportunity to actually put it into application. So, we, when we say crummy show, it's a crummy show, but it's getting better all the time. We're, we're learning. We're learning the process of filming. 
So that's really what drew me into uh, wanting to continue to do this. Not just to start, but to continue doing it, even though we're not getting that many views. It's just, it's a fun thing to practice on. It allows you, it allows us both to uh, hone our skills. It allows me to be a better actor, allows you to be a better director and scriptwriter. That's right. That's, I think that's a good point. I think ever since doing this, my, my improv skills have gone way up. That's another thing. As we have, uh, you know, moved forth, because obviously if people look, please don't, but if you do look back at the first episode we ever did, it's... Please don't. <laughs> it's way different than uh, what we're doing now. We truly have, I think, the, I mean, it's still always improving. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we definitely have evolved from where we first started, and this, this is obviously an homage to, to Larry Vincent and his work, but, you know, how do you think your portrayal of Seymour is kind of... Uh, advanced as we've gone forth over the last two years. I've definitely grown more comfortable in uh, with the makeup and with the uh, with the voice. You see, I've had to have a little bit of coaching when it comes to the voice. Now, I'm 23 years old. I'm nowhere near the age Larry Vincent was when he portrayed Seymour, so it's a little bit hard for a for a young man like myself to be old. However, I feel like I'm. It's getting better. It's getting there. It's not going to be exactly like Larry Vincent, but you shouldn't expect it to. So uh, when you have that limited of audio and it, you can't really get the mannerisms either. Like, I don't know what mannerisms he had. So I just kind of have to make up my own stuff. I have to talk old. I have to look grumpy, although I feel like I fail at that sometimes. <laughs> like, I'm a genuinely happy guy. So having this scowl the whole time like just to be actually sinister is it can be difficult because it's it's outside my comfort zone but the makeup man the first time we did that none of us had no idea what we were doing and we did five hours of makeup of getting the lines right to make myself look old and latex like what is it liquid latex mm -hmm. it smells awful and when you're wrapped up like I don't know 11 or 12 like at night, uh, she was like, "Yeah, she just peel right off, quick and quick and easy." And I felt like I was literally tearing my face off because there was so much liquid latex. Like I, I got a picture. It's like uh, it was it was an incredibly painful experience getting that stuff <laughs> off. Let me tell you. But uh, later episodes, we we brought it down to about one hour. There's also with a. Uh you know, the, being that this is Larry Vincent's birthday, I think it's fair to share that there was some exciting news that came around recently. Um, our friends at the YouTube channel uh, Obsolete Video Service um, announced that there has been a tape, a full reel of a Seymour episode, probably in black and white, but it's a full reel of a, a Seymour episode, I believe, when he was at KTLA. So. Recorded from the television. Mm -hmm. Not not from the studio, but like someone recording on their television set, I don't right? know. It might have been a master reel. I'm not sure. It hasn't been... As far as I know, it hasn't been transferred yet, but I believe okay. it might have been a master reel. But aside from that, it's still a full recording of Seymour, about an hour and a half. So that's so that's the only full recording that would exist that's ever been found. So I mean, that's that's really exciting news, and hopefully that'll get transferred soon. Cause oh I'm yeah, looking forward to, to seeing it. But I mean, that's that's really exciting news that there that that's been discovered. Oh yeah, one of the challenges about making this is there is very little source material to work on. We have a couple of clips on YouTube. Uh, there's that one clip that was actually used in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, with Sister Seymour, where uh, it's time to squawk back. It was it was that one, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not, it just there's just not a lot to work with, so it's really hard to correctly portray the original feeling and humor of the show. But with this reel, it might be able to help us get a lot more inspiration, be a lot more true to the original. Mm -hmm. So. We're really looking forward to that. And that is our overall goal, because being that this is a tribute, we want... And it's it's a difficult bridge to kind of gap, because obviously there's all these fans that remember Seymour. Oh, yeah. And it's it, it's difficult, especially having very little uh, resources to look upon. It's difficult to kind of, not even replicate, but to truly kind of keep in the true spirit of what, you know, Larry Vincent did. It's hard to kind of keep that going, but at the same time also make it something that is... Uh, you know, condensed for a modern audience, I suppose. Right. Being that it, I mean, if you're on television hosting a horror film, that's you know an hour and a half, two hours of you know footage right there. But 
being that we weren't necessarily uh, hosting horror films, this was more of a talk show with comedy bits kind of throughout. It's a different format in general. And right. It's hard to do something Low different. Low budget, with, no less. Yeah. So it's, it's hard to kind of keep that in the same spirit, especially if it's a different format. So, but, um... That's another thing. You did kind of break a little bit when we did have Bob Bob Gurr as a guest back in uh, oh, October broke. of 2020. You could see her demeanor just slowly throughout the it's episode. Like, change. What do I do? Yeah, this guy is at the top of his game, and I'm just starting. <laughs> Speaking of, I think now is a perfect time to get into. Uh, you know, I mean, Bob made obviously a lot of references to Seymour when he was. Oh yeah, because Bob actually watched Seymour exactly, and so, I do have a list here of. You know, quite a few, not all, but quite a few of the references we've made over the last two years on our show to the original Seymour. And I think, you know, celebrating Larry Vincent's birthday, I think it'd be a good time to kind of, you know, reminisce and go over some of those. So, what do you think? I think that's a good idea. So, of course, in general, first and foremost, uh, you know, starting with the first episode, and this continues on for every other episode, the the intro and the outro have, of course, the same uh, music as the original, and we actually uh, had that remastered by a friend of mine, Joshua. Oh, swell. And uh, he did his own recording of it as well, which is also used throughout. So it is a new recording, uh, but it is the, the original song that we use. So that's... And speaking of the outro, or the dialogue that you always cut out with at the end is the same as how Seymour would end his, you know, shows on, you know, KTLA with, you know, Fright Night or Monster Rally. So, right. So that's, you know, original. And even with the first episode, we had a lot of, you know, gags and kind of segments throughout. And that was an homage to, you know, while horse hosting uh, horror films, you know, uh, Larry Vincent, you know, he cut to these little breaks between the films and had these little gags such as, you know, going to the party behind the slimy wall and such and... You know, so that that's an homage in and of itself, but I think that's kind of a given. And starting even with the second episode, we had uh, you were, you know, listing off you know your 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 least favorite horror films and going on these list of all these B movies from the fifties and sixties, right. which is, you know, of course, a direct homage. We to we didn't do it in the way that Seymour would have, but it was something quick. Uh, remember, we're college students. We have school. We have lives to get to. I'm jobs like there's there's a lot of things going on this mm. is really on the side which is why it takes so long to get something out <laughs> so we we wanted to make sure we get it done quick but still kind of getting that feeling for better or worse and even um yeah it, it is very much a side project but it's a passion it's a side exactly. passion and you know i think like, hopefully the passion shows through i know I would hope so i know there's some people that don't necessarily see that but I mean, it if you want to see passion coming through, look at this wall here. <laughs> like, it's it may be coming apart, but Ben here made this whole thing himself, like carving all these things from. Wait, what? What is this? Particle board, foam, foam. board? Yep. This foam is board. foam, foam core. But man, it looks pretty darn good. Speaking of this wall, um, I just want to, as it's very clear, it is not in the best shape. We are going to touch it up before the next uh, episode we film with Seymour. So with brand new duct tape. <laughs> so by the third episode, which is our first Halloween special we ever did. Um, we had the, uh, we transitioned, we had one of the original intros from, you know, one of the only existing tapes from Seymour. We had that start off and it transitioned to the new intro, which I right. thought was kind of neat. And, uh, we had, you get a, a letter from a disgruntled fan, which is of course in the spirit of, we have a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, in the same episode, I think Seymour made a joke of, you know, he, he had his own, uh, horror movie coming out that he was going to make and it didn't end up working out. And uh, I, I've been looking for the poster the last few days. I wanted to show it off. I haven't been able to find it, but... It's been lost in the archives. <laughs> there are... I did have a list of some of the references we made on that poster. Because that whole poster was just a, a, a reference in and of itself. Right. So uh, the production company of Seymour's film was uh, a Vincent and Larry company production. A little on the nose. <laughs> yeah. um, Curse of the Slimy Wall was the name of the film. Hello there. <laughs> And this was before we did bring back the slimy wall, right. so uh, we made a few hints throughout the series that we were going to bring the slimy we wall We're on back. the slimiest of walls, and we were <laughs> certainly beyond that wall for a while. Yeah. Um, the reviews on the movie poster, which is talking about how terrible the film was, were by Captain Star and Mr. L. Vincent, which is another You, you, got, a, you got another Larry Vincent. Yeah. Like, Go to be honest, Ben, used the same reference twice I on the did. same poster. I did. But it's so quick, no one's going to see it, you know? I mean, until now, when... It's the magic has been ruined even more. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, in the same episode, Seymour attempted to crash the party behind his apartment, which is, of course, what he would do behind the slimy wall. 
you know, there was always a party going on behind the slimy wall, and he tried to crash it all the time. And we had you, you know, behind your library here. You had the pizza outfit, and you went in. That's and right. Tried to crash that's right. Party. And I just was just wearing the the Hawaiian shirt over my Seymour clothes, <laughs> yeah. like very convincing uh, pizza man. I almost look like a real young guy. <laughs> so that, that was a lot of fun to do. And then going on to the next episode, which was uh, our Thanksgiving episode with with Bob. Right. Uh, Bob, you know, mentioned Seymour a lot. He, he watched the original Seymour. Right. He would talk about you being on KTLA and all that, and you know, it was you know Stan Chambers. It was he, he was on the nose with a lot of stuff. It was, it was a lot of fun having him kind of bounce off with you on all that. Well, so. I, I wasn't doing a whole lot of bouncing. He was bouncing off himself. Yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of standing there. This guy is very good at this, and I am not. Uh, <laughs> whatever. It's, it's for you, too. Who cares? And um, in the same episode, there was a prank that was pulled on Caleb that he did not know in advance. It was Bob's idea. He told me in advance he was going to do it, and Caleb had no idea. So Bob had to tell. He had all these props. and the, It's hard to see it on the final uh, episode, but Bob's set had a lot of really fun decorations. He had, cause it was Thanksgiving. He had a little crock pot, and like Donald Duck was sticking out of it, and all these... Silly little thing. He but was he, uh, ready. He was, um, but he had a he had a telephone in the background, and Bob told me in advance he was going to do this. He uh, he told me because you know he watched the original Seymour. He he had the telephone ring at one point, and he picked it up, and uh, on the other end it was coming from upstairs. It was uh, it was Larry Vincent, the real Seymour, and he's like he was saying that this man is an imposter, and he's like, well, who's the real Seymour? What do you mean I'm talking to Seymour? He's right in front of me, and. Uh, I was trying not to, because, you know, I was behind the camera. I was trying not to laugh because it was so much fun. Because you didn't know that that was going to happen. Right. That he was getting and a call. I, I was just trying to figure out how to respond to make it funny. <laughs> yeah. But I failed horribly at that. It was it was fun, though. What, what was your initial thought, if you even remember at this point? What, what was your thoughts when that happened? Because you, generally, we have an outline of what we're going to go through for these episodes. But you did not know that was going to happen, so. See, even with all the episodes, even when I read the script, uh... I still don't know what's going to happen because things will change like in the middle of filming. So with that, it was, I don't know. Bob is an incredible humorous guy, but as, as I said before, it's really hard to bounce back off of him because I'm not at that same level. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a lot of fun with Bob doing that. And then the following episode, which was our Christmas episode with uh, John Masari. Right, uh, right. Killer Council Matter Space. Yes. A lot of fun. Um, he'll be at Midsummer Scream, by the way, as well as Bob. So there's a lot of fun people that are going to be at Midsummer Scream. You too can here. scream in the middle of summer. You can do it now if you want, but everyone else will be doing it there. It's going to be a lot of fun at Midsummer Scream. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people that you've seen on our show will be at uh, Midsummer Scream this season, including some some special guests. Not me. I won't be there. <laughs> so we, to I your know, dismay, I know that, or uh, to your joy. I will be there, Daniel will be there, our writer on the show, who writes some of our dialogue, he will be there. So we'll have a few people from the show being there as well. But uh, Midsummer Scream's fun. Buy tickets. This isn't an advertisement. But it's an advertisement. Well, I mean it is, but it's not paid. We don't get money. I just like Midsummer Scream, and there's good people behind it, so go to Midsummer Scream if you want. Anyways, um, John Masari, the Christmas episode, we had a cutaway, an advertisement that you did. Uh, which the background for that was the slimy wall vans, uh, Seymour's kind of van, which hasn't been. That's right. I seen. forgot that we did that scene. Yeah. So that was that was that was green screen we did. Right. Right. And uh, but I I spent hours, like, I spent a few days beforehand, just kind of doing the because you know there's photos of the original uh, van, but you know I mean those are all very grainy because they're from the 70s. Uh, of course. And I wanted to do so obviously you know we're filming on something that isn't from the 70s, so I needed the the background to match. So I I spent a few days kind of. Very quickly, just in between whenever I had breaks to kind of just, you know, put together what looked like his van. And I think I made it pretty accurate. I had a lot of the graphics that were on it. So, but that was fun to do you that kind of... just put pictures of Mystery Machine? <laughs> I should have. Um, that same episode, we had, you know, Seymour was getting kind of pranked by his neighbors. The little kids ding-donging the doorbell. Oh, yeah, and all I that, took my freaking gingerbread. Yes, and at the end, remember, they had the gingerbread uh, man in the shape of Seymour. So that was... It was a kind gesture, but... I made a lot more cookies than one. Those little <laughs> imaginary kids. I think it took... My my mom actually, because she can cook. I can't cook. My mom made the uh, gingerbread cookie uh, a day or two in advance. I think it was a, the night before. It was quite she, good. And it was, uh, it was literally, if you look back on the episode, it's a gingerbread man with the Seymour hat. So, uh, and I originally, I didn't have time, but I wanted to do icing and do the mustache and have it actually look like him, but there wasn't time. But it is still a Seymour-shaped cookie. 
so that was fun. Um, then the next episode we did after that was uh, our March episode, which is probably the the most uh, difficult one we planned. That was our adventure, point. right? Yes, that was Seymour's big adventure. Uh, we started off, Seymour got an eviction notice, because that was our episode. It was like, because I spent a few months prior doing this and building a full set for it and everything, and... You know, so because the goal it, all along was to have Seymour transfer to the slimy wall. It was just a matter of time. And, and just to put things into context, uh, getting evicted from that library, that library is in my house. <laughs> and I got really tired of filming in my house because it got really packed. I had to set things up, had to set things down. Mm -hmm. This is a whole lot easier to manage. Mm -hmm. So once I finally, it, it is a lot better filming here, I think, too. I agree. Um but once I finally did get this build, I was like, okay, we got to transfer. Originally, we were going to transfer to this set in December, but I believe we didn't time it right. So we were like, okay, we'll do it in March. So that was the March you episode. You know, just, so just we, a couple of weeks difference. Yeah. So we started off with, a, you know, Seymour got his eviction notice, which I've been looking for the life of me. I wanted to show it on this episode because it's not shown on screen. There's so many references on that. I think he got evicted by Banjo-Billy. Uh, and I think the landlord was Captain Star, which was another Larry Vincent character. He was also the director of that movie, man, and <laughs> I trusted this guy. There was a lot of reference, and I think the address, I remember, I don't remember exactly what I put, but I remember the address for Seymour's little library he was staying at at the time was like, you know, 1924 Vincent Avenue or something, so, you know, it was... We're, we're very short in references. Yeah. They, they all have to do with Vincent. <laughs> uh, this is why we need more, uh... <laughs> show footage so we have more things to reference <laughs> but yeah there's was, was good things will come in the future hopefully <laughs> um but yeah so that was a fun little eviction notice and then seymour visited all these locations we had the exterior for house on haunted hill which is a classic vincent price film and great architecture by itself really it was a uh, flink uh frank uh frank Lloyd Lloyd Wright. Wright. yeah thanks yeah so that was a lot of fun to visit that i visited a few times before but that among other things it was in blade runner but uh it was in house on haunted hill which is a vincent price film which i'm sure at one point or another larry vincent went over because it is a classic um we went we drove by the uh, ktla uh, ktla building which can be seen for like a solid second which is oh yeah that was a lot of fun we were originally going to get out and film a segment with seymour in front of the KT, uh, ktla building but there was no parking but, yeah so we didn't get to do that we just did a drive-by shot but intention matters i suppose so uh, has that 70s look to it yeah and the the whole the tower that goes yeah up. i like that so nice um but uh and then we went by knott's berry farm the exterior we had you know and then and Knott's was the still closed that time wasn't it it was yeah it was still closed because this was all during a pandemic yes <laughs> um so we drove by knots we had the sign in the background then as you're trying to go back to your to your slimy wall van you stumbled across uh the banjo billy poster which i have managed to bring today this is the one that was banjo billy so yeah Speaking of Banjo Billy, we're gonna have a state. Please stay tuned if you stayed here for this long. We do have uh, a very fun announcement uh, coming at the end of this episode. Uh, let's just say that Banjo Billy, uh, this won't be the last you see of him on a poster. Um, He's got those really crump eyes going on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a fun episode. We also had, of course, at the end, you ran across Wayne once more, your sidekick, and you returned to the slimy wall, which was hello wall, a very <laughs> You know, that was the goal all along. I think that was a fun moment. When I, I, I was really kind of touched when we finally brought you over here to film that segment because, you know, you have you in the Seymour costume with the slimy wall. I mean, that was just really cool to see yeah. for the first you see, time. You see, having me portray Seymour in my library at home is one thing. Yeah, it's fancy. It's, it's spooky enough. But then having Seymour back in front of the slimy wall, it's like, ah, this is now Seymour. we're getting somewhere. Yes. And yeah, so, and that kind of leaves us off at where we are now. The last episode we did was uh, Seymour's Halloween adventure. At Knott's where, Berry Farm. Yes, the first time Seymour has returned to Scary Farm since 1974. That's almost 50 years. Almost. Two years from being 50 at this point in time. Mm hmm That was, because Seymour hosted, uh, at the time, was uh, Halloween Haunts. Now it's known as Knott's Scary Farm. Right. He hosted it two years in a row, 73 and 74, and then he passed... Uh, early 75 so so yeah th this is uh seymour's first time back to knots since right before he passed which right. is right big thing but yeah today we have a clip from that episode which is i think that's a pretty big thing seymour returning to knots so. right a little bit of a morbid fun fact but uh <laughs> when seymour passed away it was due to stomach cancer so he was having 
major stomach issues, and when we filmed at Knott's Berry Farm, I myself was having major stomach issues as mm-hmm. repercussions from COVID. Like, I'm not going to get into that, but it's like poetry, it rhymes. <laughs> it's very interesting how a lot of things echo as we film. So yeah, let's, let's take a look. All right, fringies. Now that we have our boring stuff out of the way, it's time for us to go to the spookiest place that I know. Not Fun transition. Far. Yes. Probably my favorite one we've done so far. Then we have Seymour walking down the main street of Ghost Town, which was th- right to the left of that shot. There was a bench, which is where he did a contest. I think it was a costume contest back in set. Oh, that right there is a recreation of a of a shot. Oh yeah, which which was very iconic. We got the uh, the haunted shack over there. Yes, which, you know, even though the original Haunted Shack isn't around anymore. That was not around anymore either, is it? No, they took that out recently. Then, of course, Seymour goes to what is now the uh, Roaring Twenties area, which was the Goring Twenties at the time. Oh, this art piece right here I did for uh, for Knott's for their art show. And uh, it features Seymour, so it was fun to kind of get... Caleb to be next to a combination him. of my features and Larry Vincent's, and they have Sister Seymour buttons, which mm-hmm. I was quite surprised by. Mm-hmm. I think I bought about five or six of them, so a lot of fun. Now this is uh, talking about Ben's artwork because Ben made these posters, and uh, they were for sale at uh, at Knotts. There's Knotts always has uh, art shows for their they have you know Scary Farm and they typically have featuring Boys Ben at some degree. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of fun to just kind of have that it was that picture right next to you. Oh yeah. Uh, and then of course Seymour is over now in the Roaring Twenty, Goring Twenties for. I am Gary quite a, uh, quite a hit with the ladies. <laughs> and this theater that he's right outside is uh, the, the theater that Seymour originally uh, performed at. His the final Scary performance. Farm. Yes. This was a fun. Jo- I didn't include all the little gags, but it was a lot of fun. Seymour's running around bumping into people, and that guy right there is a good friend of mine, oh, Lewis. Yeah. And uh, Lewis was there for the day, because this is... I worked at Not Scary Farm in the, the Goring 20 section, and Lewis worked there as well, and I was... Uh, we would carpool all the time, and the day that we filmed this, uh, me and Lewis were carpooling, so he just kind of came along, and I was like, well, Lewis, if you're if you're going to be here, would you want to kind of hang out, because i got to go to Not's early to film this? He's like, okay, so he just helped us with some stuff. He, he's credited in that episode yeah. as the slimy wall, because we <laughs> had him hold up the wall for the whole episode. But uh, he made a cameo there. And do, do you like the sideburns that, that I have going on? Yes. That shot right there is a recreation of uh, a shot of Seymour at the uh, original. Uh, I think it was 73 he took. Uh, went on the log ride, and there's a photo of him. I'm really glad I wasn't wearing all that liquid latex that day. Yeah. Because my face would have been melting after this ride. Yes. And dripping. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> Look at those sideburns. Maybe I should bring that back. Maybe I should bring you a soul patch. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a shot right there, recreated of Seymour on the log ride on that same section. We were very careful to try to match up the footage and all these pictures properly to where they were originally taken. It was a lot of fun that day. Definitely need a better hat. Yes. Hopefully we'll get one soon. <laughs> you know, that, that hat is just uh, one of those foam Indiana Jones hats you can get at Disneyland, just with black felt on it and a wider brim. Yes. So uh, we need to get a real bolero hat. Yes. Very poorly made. It's in the, the, the same episode right here we had at the end. Seymour got kind of beat up trying to go behind the slimy wall to the party, and he comes back and his hat's all crooked. That's that's actually the hat so messed up that we literally just tilted the brim and had it like sticking sideways. All natural. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it, we, we we need a new hat. But um but yeah. I like I like that shot. That's a nice shot. It is a nice shot. That was shot by Lewis. He did that one shot because we Lewis. Were, were on the ride. So yeah, that was a lot of fun doing that episode. Um yeah, if you haven't got if you haven't seen that episode yet, that's our most recent one, Seymour's Halloween special. Then uh, I recommend you go check it out. It's a lot of fun, and um, you know, well, while we're here, and uh, you know, it is Larry Vincent's birthday. I think what better way to kind of celebrate than uh, look back at what some of his original fans, his fringies, uh, you know, think of him. When we first started this show back in uh, 2020, uh, when we were first kind of gearing up to announce it and everything. Uh, I put a post out on Instagram basically asking people, say, hey, share your memories with us, what you 
you know, remember of Larry Vincent and Seymour and your memories of watching him originally. And you got, got some, some good responses. We did, yeah. So I think we should go over those real quick. There's some really nice ones. Now, you too can read along with me by going to the Sinister Seymour Instagram. This is uh, a post from August 19th, 2020. Just different uh, memories of Seymour. The first one is, Seymour was the coolest. He didn't need goofy costumes and makeup, although kind of did. <laughs> uh, he really brightened my childhood growing up in LA. Seymour appeared at the first couple of San Diego Comic Cons circa 1970-71. Crowds of kids followed him and he'd occasionally turn on them in character and say, Get away from me, you rotten kids! <laughs> this one says, Seymour looked to be on the verge of being a huge player in the horror host business when he succumbed to stomach cancer in 1985. The legacy of a wise guy host would live on through others, but Seymour did it with style. Let's see if I can find one of the shorter ones, because there's some lengthy ones in here. I don't know if we have time for that. Oh, wow. But people <laughs> are very, very passionate about Seymour. Seymour, with his syndication schlockfest, made my Saturday nights bearable. I taped many of his bits on cassettes from the movies he hosted. He brought so much enjoyment to so many of us. I still as many think of and remember him with fondness. He really did tr touch a lot of people's lives. and I mean, that is evident. As we mentioned in the beginning, This is it's very evident, you know, because people are still getting in touch with that Facebook group, you know, that right. people, you know, reconnecting over Seymour. I mean, people reminiscing about the old show and complaining about the new one. <laughs> but I think it does go to show just how much of an impact he really did have on people's lives. Because, you know, I mean, there could, could have been people that were going through a rough patch in their life or something, right. you know, and they just tune this on at night. It could be something that gets them through the week. Right. Uh, I don't know if it was in that post or not, but I read something that someone... Uh, said a while back it might have been a comment on an episode or something but someone wrote that uh they watched seymour with their dad growing up it was their thing and uh their dad passed uh a year or two after uh seymour went off the air but you'll always remember you know growing up watching seymour with his dad and you know it's this is a very important memory in a lot of people's lives and right. i think it's 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 a huge honor to kind of you know be able to pay tribute like this but you know be it's I wouldn't say it's continuing the legacy. Larry Vincent is his own thing. We, you can't we, we touch can't, that. Yeah. But to be able to, in some ways, bring Remind that... Remind people. Yes. And, there's new, and of course, there are, I've heard from a lot of younger people that have been finding out about Seymour through this. I think it's... Are you telling me that people actually watch this show? <laughs> good golly! I think, it's, I think it's good, though, you know, that there's... There's, there's younger people finding out about Larry Vincent and his legacy, and especially with the documentary we did last year. That was that was a good episode. That had, it's probably our most viewed uh, one that we've done so far. It's the best one because I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's I'm, I'm just very glad that people are able to find out about Seymour, the younger people that they're learning. And I remember when we first started doing this, there was an 11-year-old girl that reached out to me and said, oh, I love watching this stuff. And, you know, it's like, it, it really does, it's a small reach that it has, but... The people who do watch it do appreciate it, and I think that's something really special. I agree. So, before we say farewell and adieu, uh, I think we have some very exciting news that we've been waiting to share for the last several months, and uh, I think now's the time to reveal it. What do you think? I believe so. All right. So, um, as you know, Seymour hosted horror films behind the slimy wall. It's what he did. And, you know, we've had this series going for two years now at this point. With very little progress. <laughs> <laughs> Seymour has returned to his slimy wall, and as you'll see in the upcoming episodes, you know, uh, Wayne returns, but, and Banjo Billy, but, uh, you know, where's the film? So, well, a lot of people have been asking that, you know, when's Seymour going to host some horror films? And we're happy to announce that coming up this fall, Seymour will be hosting quite, uh, a few, a number of horror films to, uh, you know, celebrate this upcoming Halloween season. So Seymour will be returning to the business of horror hosting. You'll be seeing more of Seymour real soon. Of the real Seymour. <laughs> I shouldn't say real Seymour, but more more akin to what he actually did. Classic Seymour. Classic Seymour. There we go. Classic Let's go with Seymour that. Classic Seymour shenanigans. So it's a lot of fun. We're looking forward to it. We'll give you more updates as things go on. We should have one more episode of what we've been doing with Seymour coming out sometime this summer, but after that it'll be on to 
horror movie hosting, and it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of really good classic B-movies in line, and I think It'll it's... also be a whole lot easier to, uh, to set up. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a lot of, you know, Vincent Price films. We have one with Boris Karloff. It's, it's going to be a lot of, of fun, so... We're looking forward to it, and we hope you guys will enjoy it when it comes out. So stay updated with, you know, follow us on Instagram if you don't. Um, but we're going to be posting a lot more updates there on when this will be coming out. But, uh, yeah, Seymour will be returning to hosting horror films, and it's going to be a lot of fun this Halloween season. So with that being said, you know, it's, it's been an honor to, to have you guys watch this. And, you know, it's what else to say other than happy birthday to Larry Vincent. 98's a big number. If 98. I mean, imagine if he was still around today, because, I mean, you know, he, he died at a pretty young age, 50. That's All considering, that's pretty young. That is. and He, he looks a lot older than 50, like, just the way his cheekbones were. like Very unique cheekbones. He, he had a distinct physique to, meant for that character. He was designed for this role. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's... It's very interesting to see where this has been going over the last two years, and I'm looking forward to seeing where things continue to go. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's it's an honor. I don't know what else to say. Is there anything you'd like to add about, you know, the show and just reflecting on Larry Vinson and his birthday? I think we have a long way to go, but I think we've come a long way already, so we're up for the challenge. We're up for uh, seeing where this road takes us. Who knows, maybe it'll lead to new projects on the road that don't have to do with Seymour. Maybe we'll, we'll do other projects if this works out. If it doesn't, then uh, I guess it'll be time to see you at some other point. <laughs> well, Fringies, it's time for me to make that dreadful sojourn to the world that lies out there, beyond the slimiest of walls. Until then, Seymour and Ben here, wishing you and yours a very bad evening and a very happy birthday to Larry Vincent. Thanks for watching. And now it's time for what I know you've all been waiting for. A little fanfare, please. Thank you. Yes, it's time to squawk back, where you dummies get a chance to wear your squawks. The only feature of this kind on any horror show in the nation. Alive and unrehearsed. On tape, uncensored. All right, sir, will you step right up and let's hear your squawk. Moving right along here. Good evening, Mr. Sophomore. That's Seymour. I agree. Huh. However... Oh. However... Just move right along, sir. However, I've been watching your show for some time now. <clears throat> and I think your views on horror films are slanted. Slanted! Could you just give us the important point, sir? We have so many other guests and they're all waiting to squawk back. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the way that you treat your helper, Yudinsky, is cruel and inhumane. Well, I... And you have no respect for great films like... The Headless Ghost. Really? Monster and the Girl and the Astounding She Monster. Sir, I'm terribly sorry, but we're running out of time. Could you come back again next week, sir? I doubt if I'll be around next week. Well, I'm sorry, sir. We'll have to move along. And that's it, folks. That's all for tonight. They're taking us right off the air. But join us again for Squawk Back, the only feature of this kind on t Excuse me. I see more here. Oh, George, how are you? It's George Putnam. You just saw the show. Sure, you can use it any time. Yes, I agree. You have more control over the show. Well, it's very simple, George. You just pull the lever. Now, if anybody gives you an argument, down they go.